I'm DJ Premier, and I present to you, So What's Up? Okay, computer. Run it back. So what's up? Special requests are back. All of them are special every episode, but certain special requests kind of up certain special requests. This one has been over requested. And like I said, until you find the disc, I don't have anything to say until we find the disc. We found the disc, and now we can get into the story. This one has a lot of chapters because it's a really a two-year thing that happened with this song. But before I even get into the song that I'm about to talk about, I gotta add a little tiny piece to last week's episode with Paula Perry's Extra Extra, which was episode 52. Real small story I gotta add because we like our facts straight in all episodes. That's the reason why I always run my check just in case I have a question about something. And this one goes to a legendary producer who is Big Daddy Kane's original DJ and part of the entire Juice Crew family along with Scoob and Scrap Lover, DJ Mr. C. When Paula Perry signed to Mad Sound slash Motown Records, he was the A&R there. And when he A&R'd that album, he called me to do the song and they were on such a deadline that it was a last minute till the early morning at D&D Studios to record that song get it done, and then lay it all out, and then get it out to the people. And we got it out to the people. And so, you know, just in case you haven't seen it, check episode 52, all right? Shout to Paula Perry, shout to Brooklyn, the Queen of Fort Green, shout to Q45 once again, shout to Master Ace of the INC, and uh, so on and so on and so on. Now moving forward to there. This is another rewind, rewind! Shout to Karis One. All right, now it is about that time to, yeah, let's do the disc and then we can do the rewind and then we can do the forward, fast forward, all right? Ooh, man. Dwick. All right, I'm holding this one for a long time because see how all the scribbles on it? Actually, if you look, it's all messy, but it says smooth B right here. I'll hold it up for a second. It says smooth B, yeah, that's tacky. Uh, that's just how I write. And that says Greg Nice <laughs> somewhere in here. As you can see, I'm holding it up, I'm holding it up. Pardon all the, you know. I'm hard to read like graffiti, but steady. Science I drop is real heavy. Shout to Rock Hill. But yeah, this right here is, ooh, it's fucking burning. But I can handle the fire. All right, now dig this. A lot of people gave us a lot of problems, but now you'll hear the total reason why everything happened to this record right here to end up being on, whoa, <laughs> being on hard to earn. Now look, this episode right now is being taped on March 8th which is the, the day is 2023. This is the 29th anniversary of the album Hard to Earn, which Dwick appeared on. It wasn't supposed to be on Hard to Earn. It was supposed to be on 1992's Daily Operation. Now I will explain, but since this is being shot on the anniversary of 29 years of Hard to Earn, of course I gotta wear the hat, and of course, now everything will make sense, all right? Shout out to Common Sense. One day it'll all make sense. Okay. When we were working on Daily Operation, we've always, back in 92 for its release, we've always done a B-side record, okay? This is how Dwick even happened. First of all, Greg Nice and Smooth B, better known as Nice and Smooth, which is featured on this classic fucking record, they were doing their album, Ain't A Damn Thing Changed, which came out in 1991 on Def Jam. Now, when they were doing that record, they did a posse cut where they looped words I manifest from my original 12-inch instrumental and did a song over it. It also featured their, their crew on the record. Shout out to Preacher Earl, Mellow T, Bass Blaster, Asu, 
and guru of Gangstar. Rest in peace to Guru for life, Gangstar for life. You already know, Guru forever. Shout out to his son, KC, as well. And his old family, Lana, Trish, Jossie, his brother Jay, his dad, the Honorable Judge Elam, and uh, Judge, no, you gotta do it right, the Honorable Judge Harry Elam Sr. And shout out to his mother, the beautiful Miss Barbara Clark Elam. All right, and she was pen pals with my mom. That's how deep it goes with us. All right, so now let's get deeper with this. We did a record on Nice and Smooth album called Down the Line. Once that record was done, we were like, well, we did a posse cut for you. You got to do a posse cut for us. Just an even trade. We didn't know everything was going to turn out to what it turned out to be to this very day. We were just doing a swap as friends, all right? So 1992 comes along, and we're about to drop our single, Take It Personal. Once we dropped Take It Personal, we said, let's put the B-Sides record on the B-Side of Take It Personal. So we went to the studio and cooked up this joint. And of course, as it got cooked up, Greg came in, Guru came in, Smooth hadn't shown up yet. But once he got there, we had a little problem the first day. It was a two day session. First day, he's about to lay it down and Guru lays his verse. Greg went first. I'm already laying the Greg N I M M N I the M M N I C E. Cause I just kept hearing that in my head on some DJ shit because DJs hear lyrics. Just so you understand, DJs that scratch and cut and battle, we hear things in our head when it comes to lines that either are battle oriented or just lines that fit the record based off of just whatever it's going to be called we didn't have a title yet there was no title dwick yet it was just a new song that we're doing to swap out from doing down the line on their album so we start to do it and this is the crazy thing shout to the west coast homie family dub c of dub c in the mad circle and of low profile with dj aladdin where he got it started first and then went to WC in the Mad Circle. Coolio was in the group. His brother Crazy Tunes, rest in peace, was uh, rest in peace to Coolio and DJ Crazy Tunes. Crazy Tunes is Dub C's brother. And then of course they're part of the Lynch Mob with Ice Cube. You always catch uh, Cube with Dub C uh, as a hype man and performing as well because he is an MC in, in his own right. And he's down with Cube. And shout out to Ice Cube and the whole Lynch Mob. Rest in peace to my brother man monster pookie monster pookie star he got so many different names but uh and even Starface. you know what i'm saying rest in peace to the homie a, a true 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 g and we always carry his energy with us shout to kibo shout to brother ron you know the just the whole family man so with that said shout to big herc who uh who used to do security he passed but his his son little herc it tours with them does all the visuals and whatnot for cube so uh you know that, that that's an ongoing thing that'll never stop and again that's family right there had to add all of that because it's so important to this whole situation now when the record was done before there was a title of dwick as i said earlier we the dub c is at the session because he was hanging out with us and also another another major legend from the Masters of Ceremony. Shout out to Grand Pooba, Dr. Who, and of course, shout out to DJ Jazzy J. My man, Don Barron, was at the session too. We had a big giant TV with the turntables, and they both sat on the edge of the, turn, uh, of the TV while I worked on this song, okay? Smooth comes in. He starts to record his verse. No paper, no nothing, just figuring it out. He said, yo, keep the E, I left my Philly at home. Do you have another? Hey, stop the tape. Okay, run it. Yo, keep the E, I left my Philly at home. Do you have another? Uh, hold on a second. He was like, all right, take all the time you need. Let's do it again. Yo, keep the E, I left my Philly at home. Do you have another? Hold on a second. <laughs> like, as long as you need smooth, it's, we're, we're just having fun. Okay, let's go. Roll it. Yo, Keith, the E, I left my Philly at home. Do you have another? 
Hey man, I'm gonna have to come back and, and cook up with a dope rhyme. I'm gonna come back tomorrow. Session's over. <laughs> the next day, he came in there and said, Yo, keep the E, I left my Philly at home. Do you have another? I wanna get blunted, my brother. Now may I make a mark, then take a spark over this fat track, or should I say dope beat, subtract, delete. I ain't gonna even say it. All the wick whack, the wannabe abstract, but they lack the new knack that's coming from way, way back. Hey, yo, Premier, please pass that Buddha sack. You heard we quit no way bullshit. I told you we come, I told you before, we come back with more hits. I'm stopping right there, all right? Like, I'm not smooth B. But shout to Smaz, he knows what this is, it's called the D dot. It's some shit that we do back in in our day. Whenever you see smooth, if you see me in them right now, we'll go. Got the D dot. Got the D dot. You got you got to be there. The '90s era, man, was so much fun. All right, the song is done. All right, now we're like, what are we gonna call it? During this era of time, there was this joke being passed around, where Biz Marquis, my Aries brother, legend, icon. He's the first one that I saw do it. And actually Greg Nice did it first and caught me. Now this is where it originated from. You would mumble something so that whoever you're addressing goes, huh? And then you go, my dick. And that's where it came from. So Biz would go, hey yo, Panier, you know what I'm saying? And I'd go, and the thing is, you're supposed to go, uh-uh, you're not catching me. You both you, you you already know that that's what the, what's gonna be the joke. And he would go, yo, Premier, you got stabbing now, blah, blah, blah. And, you go, and it makes you go, huh? And he goes, ma, do it. And he do it in front of everybody. And everybody busts out laughing in the barber shops, on the corner, whatever. Greg, same thing. Yo, yo Premier, you gonna go to, you gonna go to the, blah, 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 blah. and I go, huh? Cause you kinda hear, you gonna go to the whatever. You can make up whatever you want. But that's where it came from. And then you go, huh? And they go, ma, do it. And even Tupac did it in Juice. If you see the, the clip after they ran from the cops and they got away and he does it, they didn't do the joke part, but that's where it originates from. So being it was such a heavy thing that everybody was doing at that time, and everybody was doing it, it didn't matter who, you'd be at the clubs in our era and everybody go, yo man, you wanna go get a drink? You go, huh? More, you go, God damn, you got me again. That's where it came from. So we figured, name it this. Dwick. And that's where it came from. So now you know where this came from. People's like, it stands for doing wild, uh, yellow, yellow, crazy, tea cats, you know. <laughs> People were trying to make up words. That's where it came from. And I figured this is the way you spell it, D-W-Y-C-K. Cause I didn't want to spell it D-W-I-C-K, so. That's the joke, and that's where it came from in our era. And the first person to catch me like that was Greg Nice and Biz Marquis, and many, many others. Then I would do it to people, same thing. Because again, you're not expecting it. And then they'll do it to some people, do it to you again. Hey man, you And I'll go, nope, you didn't get me this time. So that's do it, all right? Now, we turn it into the label. To be a B-side to take it personal. You heard him on the record, Greg Nice said 92. One year later, Peace Out Premiere took me out with the fader because it was on the B-side in 92. This is the era where cassette singles were major in, in the industry. You go to the record store, they'd have CDs, 12-inch vinyl, album vinyl, and cassettes, and cassette singles. It's usually a song or two that's for like for 99 cents or a dollar, okay? Or a dollar 99. Take it personal and Dwick was through the roof, one of our biggest sales ever in our career. But we wanted to make sure that if people want to get that song besides just getting on a 12 inch or a cassette single, what album is it going to be on? It needs to be on daily operation. Now, one of the reasons why we almost had that happen is because our label mates, Arrested Development, had just dropped their debut album on the same label, Chrysalis, with us at Do EMI. And when they did, they did a video after a Tennessee video, they did a video to people every day. The one that they did to the video version was not on the album. When they put it on the album, they went double platinum real fast. So we were like, that's gonna happen to us. That's gonna happen to us. The label says, okay, 
where are you going to put in the sequence of the album? I said, I'll figure that out. I've been sequencing every album since I've started with Guru and Gangstar. Every album I've always sequenced from Group Home to Jay with the Damager to even Nas. I even sequenced Illmatic for him. Uh, I love sequencing albums. It was always a thing that I wanted to do when my dream to become an artist and a DJ and a producer happened. So that was really important for me. To, to always sequence albums and I think you know so far so good we've always gotten it consistent with that album I was looking for a spot found a spot even went to mastering to slot it into the to the album and about two weeks roughly when they're about to re-release the album they said we're gonna go ahead and just leave it like it is but then here comes the complaint we'd run into so many fans because Dwick took off like 20 million rockets and everybody that saw us say, yo, I just bought your new album and Dwick ain't on there, how I get it? Just a 12 inch in the cassette single, man. Oh man, I don't have a turntable and I want the, I want on the album. People were complaining like that. Almost like we, we stole some, just random times. And then Guru's hitting me. Yo man, people are complaining because Dwick ain't on the album. And we were very upset that they didn't continue to go ahead and do it after we had mastered it to sequence it into the album. So, it just became a street hit that blew up all over the world and is still big to this day. But I said, you know what? As we moved forward to drop our Hard to Earn album, I said it's only right to put Dwick on there because it's got to be on one of our albums. We hadn't done Full Clip as the greatest hits. We hadn't done any of that yet. So the follow-up album, it made total sense to add Dwick to that. So a lot of people were like, well, didn't y'all do that? So people questioned it. Wasn't that done in 92? Now you know why. Shout to Keith Ward, who directed the video for Dwick. And also, since it was the B side to the A side, I got to shout out Classic Concepts for shooting the Take It Personal video. That's If you don't know who Classic Concepts is, that's Ralph McDaniels of Video Music Box and the Vid Kid, a.k.a. Lionel Martin, who directed that. When it came to Dwick blowing up that whole summer, we was always in the hood, everywhere. You could just hear Dwick blasting everywhere. They were like, we got to get a video. All right. Keith Ward didn't have a concept of what we were going to do because it was a last minute call to get him to do the video and put it together. We just started scrambling for what are we going to do? Had no idea. Plus, key things had to be in that video. Red alert. Cool, no. cool DJ Red Alert, let's say his name right. Cool DJ Red Alert, the prop master, and Kid Capri. Very, very vital to having them in the video. Now this is what was so dope. Back at that time, Red Alert was DJing on 98.7 KISS FM. He was the rival station to WBLS with Molly Maul and Mr. Magic. And that they, they were rivals, but also just two of the dopest rap shows. And shout out to Chuck Chill Out, who was on Friday nights on, on KISS. And Red Alert was on Saturday nights. But Molly Maul and Mr. Magic was on Friday and Saturday. And you would just turn your dial to both or have two radios and record both. Because they all going to play different things and some of the similar things. And that's how we got our hip-hop knowledge of what was about to be the next cracking thing in the underground. From there, we were like, yo, man, what are we going to do? We started just making calls. That's when three-way calls and, you know, where you could put another person on the line was a new thing. Yo, get smooth on the line. Yo, yo, and then you call Greg, and Greg, you call Guru. Guru, you, we'll call Kid Capri, and Kid Capri will call Red Alert. That's exactly what we did. We called and said, where should we shoot this video? Someone, I don't remember who said it, but they said, let's go to Atlantic City. Right now? Yeah. We loaded up the van, we loaded up our cars, we drove to Atlantic City, still with no plan. And the girls were in tow as well. Bikinis in, in tow as well. We get there and we're just like, let's just walk around and film. And that's exactly what happens. And then I was like, I, I've always been adamant about showing me scratching on turntables to show the authenticity of scratching because it's such an art form and it's so important to our culture. We couldn't, we asked all the casinos, can we borrow a table for real quick to set the table up? No, nope, can't take no table out. Can we get like a stand or a chair? Nope. 
you look in the video, you see me on the ground, I'm squatting. That's when my knees was good. I could squat down like if I was catching a, 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 a 90 mile an hour pitch from the mound, straight cutting on my turntable. One turntable, one mixer, but it all fucking worked out so good. And that's how you got the video of Dwick. And it was one of the most fun times, even just running with Guru, being pushed around and drinking the lemonade. Everything was just freestyled off the head and it turned out to be one of the most legendary videos. And that led to us doing Yo TV raps just to do a special performance of Dwick Live. And you know, shout out to Chris Latimer, who actually saw it the De La Soul celebration for True Goy and for De La Soul. Shout out to Mason Paz. And we are gonna miss you, Dave. True Goy, yoga spell backwards, plug two. Brother, we love you, man. And uh, I saw Chris Latimer for the first time and we all wore the hoodies. Ed Lover, Dr. Dre, T-Money, me, Smooth, Greg Nice, and Guru with the African-American co college shirts with the patch on the side. We all rocked those for that, that performance. Matter of fact, take a look. Oh, yeah. Okay, gang. Oh, okay, gang. I rock uh -huh, the mic like uh -huh. a fifth M's hoes. Here's how it goes, I am a genius. I mean this, I shape this, you'll take this. I'm kind of fiendish. You wish that you could come into my neighborhood. Me in my mental state. Still I'm five foot eight. Crazy as I wanna be, but I make it orderly. You could say I'm sort of the then, so get lost. We got invited to do in living color, which was the show at the time. And the crazy thing about that was we were the first artists to perform there live because I told them I have to do it live. I cannot fake it on the turntables. I gotta salute Rosie Perez. She fought for us to get it done live and they gave us that in and passed us in. And if you ever see that episode, you'll see that I'm live. Matter of fact, take a little piece of that. Take a, take a little look at that. Okay, gang. Okay, gang. Okay, gang. Here he is. I chant eeny, meeny, miny, mo. What? I wreck the mic like a pimp pimp toes. Here's how it goes. I am a genius. I mean this. What? I shape this. You'll take this. I'm kind of fiendish. You wish that you could come into my neighborhood. Me uh -huh. in my mental state. Still a five foot eight. Crazy as I want to be. Cause I make it orderly. You can say I'm sort of the force. So get lost. Oh, the brother who will make you change your Now, I always explain it. Just in case you're late. Shouldn't have to explain it, but we're going to explain it. All the sounds you hear on this little small disc, everything you hear from the boom to the bap to just everything except for the scratches, are all on this disc right here. It is all stored on here, but it is controlled by a device called the Akai S950 sampler, which is what we were using in that era of hip hop. And then to make it play, you, I was using an MPC 60 or MPC 62, also made by Akai. I was a big fan of that. Shout out to Eddie Sancho, my engineer, who put me onto the MPC because I was using the SP-1200 prior to that. So once we got to that part, the thing that makes it all go around is a small box called the Roland SBX-80. That syncs all of the equipment together to roll exactly when you play on the two inch tape machine. No digital, all tape. You mess up a punch, you mess up a recording, it's gone. With digital, you can just hit the undo button and you're back to where you are. That's why we had to be that accurate with doing our records because of that type of process. Once it's gone, it's gone. You gotta do it right. And we still value that when we carry out how we do records to this very day. Now, I guess it's about that time to load it all up. Put this disc right here, this hot disc into the S950 and load it and then being that everything has to communicate by some type of wire, we use MIDI cables, M-I-D-I. -I. Those cables make the communication all complete through all of the equipment. And once you hit that record button, this is what you get. Very M-A-D, 
you say parquet. It's all right if you wanna make a sway on my way uptown. Took the deuce to the tray. I original. Man, so many different, th just, just levels to this one, but especially because again, this episode was shot on the 29th anniversary of Hard to Earn, which Wick finally appeared on. And salute to Gangstar, salute to 29 years of that album. And uh, one of my favorites, and it's also the first album that Guru said, you're going to name this album. And I was like, I don't want to name it, you name it, because he's very good with names and titles. He said, no, you're going to do it. And just in one day in the conversation, I said, you know, man, what we do, it's, it's like really hard to earn doing what we do. He goes, that's it. You just name the album. And that's how we did it. Shout to Danny Hastings, who did the, the, the photography, and the Gangstar Foundation, J. Ruth, the original Gangstar Foundation, J. Ruth and Damage of Big Suge and Group Home, finally appeared on an album like everybody else was doing with their crews. And that's where that monumental picture came from. Shout to Melikai the Nutcracker and Lil Dap. And uh, on we went to more heights, and every album always outdid the next. Another thing I also got to add that made Dwick even so synonymous with just greatness is I got to shout out Jay-Z. Shout to Hove. When Fat Joe and Remy Ma did the record all the way up, it blew up like it was supposed to. They did a remix and added Jay to it. And he threw in there, lemonade was a popular drink and it still is. Such a great guru line. I remember in the early days, people were like, ah, what does that mean? But it is one of the most famous lines and it's the truth. Lemonade still is a popular drink. The crazy thing is, I texted Jay and said, that was dope that you shouted him out. And he said to me in a text, that's for the culture, an icon, had to do it. He didn't ask him to do it, he said he had to do it. That's how much this thing is so vital to the history of what Gangstar does. So from that point, you already know what it is, man. It's another episode, and one more thing I gotta say is, that's what's up. My dialogue is my own, smooth beat will never bite.